Hi, my name is Zygmunt and I am building a pancake machine. You are now watching the second episode of my video series about this topic, so if you are new here, I recommend you to watch my previous video about building a pancake roller device. You can find the link in the description, but actually, in a few words, I can tell you what happened. I took these metal plates, axles, rubber cylinders from old printers, bearings, these elastic bands, plywood planks, screws and built this. Then I hooked up a small circuit that controls a stepper motor that rotates the axles and now it can roll up a pancake. In today's video we are going to build a device that puts some stuffing on the pancake before it gets rolled up. Here's my plan. This is a container with a trapdoor at the bottom that can be opened by a servo motor. This will be attached to a printer head from an old printer that can move along this rail with the help of this DC motor. And the plan is that this container with the chocolate powder in it moves back and forth above the pancake while the chocolate powder is flowing through the trapdoor. So let's build this container first and for that I'm going to use this quite hard paper. I forgot the glue. Okay. Let's build the trap door. Good morning, the glue has set, let's get the servo motor working. Huh. Not bad. Well, this thing works perfectly. Let's see this rail. This was part of an old printer and luckily we can find every component for a closed loop control system on it. Here's a DC motor that can move this print head and here you can see this weird band that goes along the rail. This is a timing strip. And believe me or not, there's an incredible amount of very thin stripes on it. Watch this. But what is it good for? Well, on the print head at the back of this board, here's this tiny device, an optical encoder. It looks at the timing strip very carefully and counts how many stripes has passed. We can wire it to the microcontroller and every time a stripe passes through the optical encoder, 
it sends a signal to the microcontroller. When this happens, an interrupt routine gets called, so the microcontroller immediately stops whatever it's doing and executes the interrupt routine, which will be to record the incoming information. And if another stripe passes, it happens again. And don't worry, there's no way that the stripes are coming faster than the microcontroller could execute the interrupt routine, so there will be no missed stripes, even if the head is moving this fast. So we have a number that tells us the head's current position in the unit of stripes. But what's the problem here? Of course, while the system is turned off, it doesn't count. If it's on, we always know where we are only according to the starting point, but that could be anywhere. To fix this, we need a reference point. At the left end of the rail, we place another optical sensor that will detect when the head is at the left end, because then we set the current position to zero. Our strategy will be that after turn on, not knowing where we are, the best we can do is to carefully start moving to the left until this optical sensor notices the head, then we set our position to zero, and from now on, we know our position according to the left end of the rail to the zero point. Here we go, and I installed another optical sensor at the other end to detect when the head uh, shouldn't go any further. Let's do the wiring. I wrote this code Based on the head's current position and the target position, it calculates how fast should the DC motor spin and in which direction and gives it the appropriate voltage level. It uses the PID controlling method, which is a very interesting and quite complicated topic, but for now the point is that this controller has some parameters that depend on physical attributes of this printer head and rail, frictional resistance, inertia, and these parameters determine the way how we get to the target destination. We can get there like this, or like this. But what we want is something like this. And for that we have to find the proper values for these parameters. Of course we could calculate them with some really dark engineering magic, but I will just use the method of brute force and try different values until I get the right result. But not without thinking. If we set the parameters irresponsibly, an instable oscillation can show up and we want to build a pancake machine, not a Tacoma machine. Brilliant. Cool. I glue this piece of wood to the container so I can easily clamp it to the print head with the screws. Okay, let's try it. <laughs> oh, a 
pancake for sweet toothed people. I can't wait to put this together with the pancake roller we built last time. I will connect everything to one microcontroller and then let's see how does it work with the pancake. It took a while to set the proper angle for the trapdoor when it's open, but finally it's working. That was it for today, thank you very much for your attention, if you like the video you can subscribe to my channel, I make videos every year, so see you in the next one.